Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Alex. I'm very happy to be here at KubeCon North America to talk to everyone about the Harbor Project. Um, it's a shame that this is still a virtual conference and we couldn't come in and share this in person, but I hope everyone is doing really well. And thank you for tuning in. Uh, so today, my co-presenter and I um, will talk a little bit about the Harbor Project. This is a graduated project in CNCF. And if this is your first time attending a Harbor session, uh, is think of it as a registry, a place to, to store and manage your container images and other cloud native artifacts. Um, possibly you're using Helm charts, you're using singularity files or something, something else. Um, but for the purpose of this session, we're gonna be focusing mostly on the latest and greatest of um, the Harper project. So focusing on the, the latest version 2.1 release, as well as some of the things we're working on for the upcoming 2.2. Um, if you've never, if you're not familiar with what an image registry does, um, and have never been exposed to the basic set of capabilities that Harbor provides, please check out our website and check out talks at previous KubeCons where we've always had an introductory session that you know sort of starts with what is an image registry, um, what does it do, why do you need it. So that can be really helpful. <clears throat> so quick introduction. Uh, I'm Al I'm Alex Xu. I'm a product manager in the cloud native team at VMware, leading the Harbor effort. Um, so responsible for trying to understand the requirements around the container registry for responsible for driving the roadmap, collecting feedback from, from you guys and making sure that we're building something that people will actually use and, and will actually you know, want to recommend to, to, to their friends. So, and today with me is my co-presenter, Daniel Zhang. Hey, Daniel. Hey guys, this is, hey guys, this is Daniel. Um, yeah, I will present with Alex to you. Um, today, I will show you a few cool demos um, regarding the latest feature we deliver in version 2.1. Uh, uh, I'm working for VMware as a staff engineer and uh, maintainer of Harbor project. Glad to meet you. Uh, thanks, Daniel. Um, we've also listed two of our colleagues uh, who helped us with this presentation. Um, so shout out to Steven and, and Steven Zhou as well. So we, you know, we start with the intro slide. What is Harbor? Well, Harbor is a trusted cloud native registry that can store, sign, and scan content. Um, so it's basically a place to host and manage your artifacts. And you know, when we started this project back in 2014, um, building an on-prem registry leveraging Docker distribution, um, we came across some issues. Right when when we were using Docker Hub and other public registries. So we're um, over time, we've, you know, addressed those issues and also added more services and features uh, related to lifecycle management, uh, security features like scanning and signing images. And recently, we've been focusing on image distribution through P2P and proxy cache. And now we're focusing on um, high availability, delivering a high avail highly available hardware cluster through our operator. So our mission is to be the best cloud native registry for Kubernetes. Um, and we started with support for Docker images. We expanded to Helm charts. Um, and with Harvard 2.0, we can now support any OCI compatible artifacts. So let's start by looking at the community, um, which is thriving, doing really well. Uh, so we have more than 13K GitHub stars. We have 200 plus committers. Um, 50 plus contributing companies, more than 4,000 forks. We have 14 maintainers across five different companies, across three uh, different continents in North America, in Europe, in Asia. Uh, we've also seen a lot of diversity in our contributors as well, in terms of backgrounds and skill sets, from developers to DevOps engineers to system admins, and um, basically everyone, everyone in, in their in their team has needs around. Uh, a registry to to manage their artifacts. Um, so we're extremely happy about this, and and you know we want to thank you guys for all the work you've done, um, and thanks again for tuning in. And so I want to just quickly jump into this and start with some of the things that we've been working on for the two point one release. The first one I want to talk about is called Proxy Cache, which is the ability for Harbor to act as a pull-through cache for another remote registry, um, and you know 
that's usually we call that the target or the remote registry or the upstream. And this is basically situations where you have um, a registry that you're trying to hit, but you have either limited connectivity or no connectivity um, to that target. And this could be because of compliance or because of uh, security issues or um, limited egress options. And um, so Docker Hub is a really great example of, of uh, a client registry, of a, a target registry they're trying to hit, right? Docker Hub is a registry where Docker clients from all over the world are trying to pull images from. But if you're pulling too fast or you're pulling too frequently, then you can trigger the, do the Docker Hub rate limiter, uh, which can throttle your connection or even get you IP banned. And so hardware as a proxy cache is meant to address this very problem. In this case, it means that hardware will serve as an intermediary to pull the images and cache them locally for you uh, and then serve it to you to serve it to the Docker clients. So it's much faster and you know, it minimizes going over the network unnecessarily and, and prevents you from getting IP banned. So the way to, to um, utilize this feature is basically when you're as you would when you're creating a Harper project, if you're familiar familiar with that workflow, uh, there's an added option to enable it as a proxy project um, where you would have to then put in the, select the target registry endpoint. Um, that's, the, that's the endpoint that you're proxying for. And so when you want to Docker pull from that remote registry, you will Docker pull from the proxy project instead. And every time you do a pull, uh, it'll, it'll kick off a request to, to Harper, which will kick off a request to that upstream registry and, and do a comparison to see if the image in its cache is indeed the most up-to-date copy. Uh, if it is, it will just serve the cache the copy. And if it isn't, it will re-pull, uh, recache it, and then serve it to, to, to the Docker clients. So you will have to modify your Docker pull command and your pod manifest to hit the proxy project instead. Um, so the second project or the second feature I want to highlight is called non-blocking GC. It's called non-blocking because prior to, to 2.1, garbage collection will put the registry in read-only mode. So you can still interact with your existing artifacts in Harbor. Uh, you can still you know, use the APIs. You can still um, use the web console, um, run you know, certain policies. Uh, you can still pull the images, but you can't push images and you can't delete them essentially for the entire duration of that GC execution. And so with the 2.1 non-blocking garbage collection, users can push images, they can pull images, they can delete images from Harbor while GC is running. So, you know, it's completely, runs completely silent in the background with no impact to uh, user operations. And you don't have to worry about, you know, data corruption or anything like that. Um, data corruption is, you know, it, it was a, a potential concern for us um, because of, the, the way the um, images are laid out and stored in distribution. Um, they're essentially, um, you know, this is owing to the, the cross-referenceable nature of the doc distribution where the image layers are stored in the most efficient way possible with no redundancy. Um, they're essentially deduped across all the projects in a single Harbor instance. So it's really great from a storage perspective, but you know, it, it can be tricky from, from um, whenever you're doing something destructive like running garbage collection or you're deleting images. Um, and the way we were finally able to achieve this was we're essentially snapshotting all the image layers that are marked to be deleted and then sort of continuously tracking and resolving these against any incoming image blobs as, as part of, uh, of a push request um, while GC is running. <clears throat> So uh, it's quite uh, an important feature from an operational standpoint. It's very highly requested by large enterprise users that have anywhere from hundreds of uh, gigabytes to we've seen tens of terabytes of images stored on each Harbor instance. And, and because you know GC can be quite time consuming depending on how often you run it, um, if it's placed in read-only mode for an extended amount of time. And on top of that, there's no way to tell how long that job will run for, or how much disk space you will, it'll be deallocated from each execution. You know that can be um, problematic and it can, it can be quite stressful. <clears throat> All right. So imagine if you're in the software delivery business, sort of software supply chain uh, business, where all the images um, 
are landing in your Harbor instance and you're the one responsible for distributing these to your customers. Um, and so that's why we've added the ability to perform a dry run, which will give you an estimation of the amount of disk space um, that will be freed up. And so by making it non-blocking, not only is it you know, not um, incurring a penalty on your uh, user operations, not only is it running in a, in a faster and more efficient manner, but you know, the time it takes to run GC is no longer uh, as much of a factor. It's no longer as debilitating to your business uh, if it if it goes over, you know, if it goes um, runs for 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 quite some time, right? You're you, you're taking the pressure off the garbage collection aspect of maintaining a registry. Um, so before I move on to two point two, um, Daniel will do a demo of the the proxy cache as well as the online garbage, the non-blocking garbage collection. Sorry. So let me stop sharing. Let me make sure that's still recording. Uh, OK. Yeah, it is still recording. Yeah, so let me get started. Uh, hey, guys. So uh, the first demo I'm going to show you is uh, proxy cache. I need to use the recorded demo due to the instability of my network. Um, so let's move on. Uh, so in the uh, proxy cache, to implement it, we reuse the code of replication. Um, so um, the user experience also has some overlap. Uh, for you to uh, create a proxy cache project, first you need to create a registry endpoint, the same way as you uh, created for a target registry, create a target registry for replication. Um, so in this case, I just created a Docker Hub endpoint with my uh, personal account. And I can create a new product. Note that in this dialog, um, there is a new uh, switch, a proxy cache. I can switch it on and select this endpoint I just created. Yeah, after that, this will be the uh, proxy cache project, proxy images from Docker Hub. Uh, note that this is an empty project, no images. And uh, if I issue a Docker pull command against this uh, uh, proxy cache project, Here I want to pull uh, go harbor slash harbor core images from Docker Hub via my proxy cache project. I just append this uh, relative URI to the uh, URI of my project uh, uh, of the harbor instance like this. Um, and if I uh, start pulling, you can see the images is serving directly uh, via this uh, uh, proxy cache uh, from Docker Hub. Okay, now at the same time under the hood, uh, there uh, in the background, there is a go routine to write the content of this image to Harbor's storage. And uh, because it's uh, asynchronous, you need to wait a couple of seconds when you refresh. And you can see that there is a repository Harbor core in the image. Note that once this image is stored in Harbor storage, it's, it's the same as the images you pushed to Harbor. So it has all the information and you can do uh, all the stuff to this image, such as uh, scanning uh, or adding tags, removing tags. Here I uh, simulate uh, outage of Docker Hub by messing up my DNS so that my uh, Harbor instance cannot access this Docker hub. And uh, you can see the test connection, the ping doesn't work now. Um, but uh, if I remove this uh, image locally and uh, pull it again from my Docker client, um, Harbor will do the best effort to sync with the target registry, but in this case, uh, it is not accessible. So um, Harbor will serve whatever is available locally. So in this case, um, you can still get this image that is cached in Harbor. Uh, we consider it's really helpful for you to alleviate the uh, problem uh, caused by the read limiting in the Docker Hub. 
uh, it's also worth uh, mentioning that this uh, proxy cache project uh, it has all the capabilities uh, except for pushing. Uh, has all the capabilities of a regular project in Harbor. For example, you can use the code policy to control how much images can be proxied. And you can also set up this uh, uh, tag retention policy to remove this uh, styled, styled um, uh, image cache so that you can uh, you know, serve the, store the new uh, proxied images. So that's the demo for the proxy cache. Uh, next is a non-blocking GC, uh, non-blocking garbage collection demo. Uh, so um, as Alex mentioned, in when we implement this feature, uh, instead of relying on the Docker distributions code, we use this data in Harbor's database as the single source of truth to help us decide uh, what layers should be removed and what uh, you know, how much space will be free is also available. So um, when you hit the uh, dry run, uh, we, we just mark the uh, layers that uh, are candidates to be removed and calculate the size. And we can provide a hint for the admin to, you know, let him know how much space will be free if we run the GC right now. No, this is a very rough estimation because this is a non-blocking GC. So images may be pushed when the GC is running. You're gonna see now. Um, if I, uh, you know, uh, trigger the GC now, um, you can see the job is scheduled and it's running. Um, you can notice that um, there is no longer the warning bar saying that Harbor is in read-only mode, and uh, at the same time, I can do a Docker push uh, to my uh, Harbor instance uh, while it's uh, you know being garbage collected. Yeah, it's still running, and the pushing is uh, in progress. It's an instance on AWS, so the you know it's a bit slow. Okay, um, you can see this uh, garbage collection is also finished. Um, if we uh, see the log, uh, you can see uh, what layers are removed and there is a, a actual uh, you know, size of the storage that is freed by calculating what uh, layers are removed. Um, this is a, you know, a big improvement uh, for the admin so that they will not need to worry about you know, their developer not being able to push images during GC. Um, next step, uh, we may uh, improve you know, by, we are considering to improve the performance of GC by you know, doing the deletion uh, in parallel. But this is not that an issue because it, it's non-blocking. So um, All right. if the GC runs a little bit longer, we, we consider it's okay. Yeah, that's all. That's all my part, Alex. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Um, mm -hmm. I'll continue with the 2.2. Yep. So let me make sure it's still recording. Yes. Let me share my screen.
Can you see my screen? Um, okay, so let's continue. Um, so thanks, Daniel, for, for that for that demo. Um, switching gears a bit now, I want to talk about the upcoming 2.2 release and some of the things that are, that are being planned and being worked on. Um, the first one is metrics and observability. And this is really just a fancy way of saying we're going to be supporting Prometheus. So the goal is to monitor services deployed, um, actions performed uh, as part of your Harbor deployment. Um, and expose those metrics through an HTTP endpoint for Prometheus. And so if you have Prometheus already set up in your environment, um, if it's already part of your stack, you can then scrape whatever data you want off that endpoint. Um, and we're going to make it you know, highly customizable uh, in terms of the kind of data you can, you can retrieve. And you know, when you think about key telemetry, um, telemetry can be divided into several layers, right? At the very bottom, you have the platform, which is your node level information, and you can monitor your resource consumption. So CPU, RAM, disk, uh, basic event logging, health status of the, of the, the, of the <clears throat> deployment as a whole. Um, and then you have the container orchestration layer, which in the case of Kubernetes will provide monitoring for all the pods um, deployed in your cluster. So here, you can see in this diagram, we have some of the main pods that make up the Harbor cluster. There's Harbor Core, there's uh, Harbor Registry, there's DB, there's Job Service, um, but there's you know a bunch of others. So uh, the, the web portal has its own, uh, Nginx has its own chart museum. Uh, if you're using Trivi or Claire image scanners, uh, they have their own. Um, and then finally, we have telemetry at the application layer, which is you know basically um, the relevant registry operations anything that the Harbor API provides is a potential candidate here. And we can ex potentially expose aggregated statistics over some period. So looking at the number of image pulls or number of image pushes, um, image deletions, also looking at top images, repositories, projects being requested, um, possibly looking at you know number of push errors or delete errors or authentication errors. Um, and you know any other statistics that could be useful for detecting abnormalities, right? Like users, number of users logged into a particular instance, number of failed attempts, um, unique IPs, number of image requests served in some period, uh, requests in flight, number of replications. Um, so this is still being uh, actively worked on. I've linked the PR to the proposal in our community repo. If you have any questions or comments or want to contribute to this work, uh, Please, please make comments on the PR or just reach out to us. So we've also gotten a lot of requests to deliver system level robot accounts, which is a robot account scoped to the Harbor instance level. So it has access to multiple projects as opposed to the current robot implementation, which is scoped to a particular project, right? If you're familiar with that, how that works, you're creating the robot account from within um, the project configuration page right now. And you know that's, that's also understandable. Project scope permissions, um, it, it becomes an issue when an image in one project is expected to extend an image in a different project, right? Which is often the case if you're using um, har images within Harbor as part of your Docker build and you're executing the Docker builds in, in multiple stages. Um, each from instruction would use a different base image uh, and build iteratively. So that's exactly what we're going to be delivering in the 2.2. Um, as the system admin persona, <clears throat> you will be able to create system level robot accounts in addition to project level robot accounts, which are only available to uh, project admins. Um, and then you, know, you can choose the projects that that robot account, that particular robot account has permissions to during the, the creation of that robot account. Um, you can also choose the particular set of actions, actions that it can perform. So like pushing image or pulling image, deleting images um, and much more. And then you'll be able to change the set of projects and the set of actions at any given time without having to uh, recreate a robot account with a new token, right? Which is the experience right now. 
Um, so if, you, if that token is hard coded somewhere into your CI or it's being used to construct a pull secret, it needs to be manually recycled right now. So we're, we're trying to kind of, we're trying to remove this kind of friction so that changing the project scope or changing the permissions of that robot um, will not impact your CI in any way. Um, so again, this is being actively discussed and being worked on. I've linked the PR as well to this proposal in our community repo. If you have any questions, um, comments, um, please you know, share your feelings on the PR. Uh, if you have already implemented your own solution, we'd be really interested in hearing that as well. And finally, if you've been tracking our progress or attended any of our community meetings over the last six to 12 months, really, you know that we've been working on an operator deployment of Harbor uh, that will you know, run it as a Kubernetes cluster, sort of similar to our help and deployment right now, but it has certain advantages when it comes to, to day two operations. And it's also um, much more intuitive for performing some of the more heavy duty operations like upgrades, uh, redeploys, backups and restores. And to give a little background, this really started with OVH Cloud. Um, I, I wanna give a shout out to OVH for kickstarting this effort and doing a, a really great job. Um, the OVH Cloud team built the first version of the Harbor operator. And you can find this as the core operator repo under the Go Harbor project on GitHub. Um, but it doesn't include certain dependent services like databases, um, uh, Redis cache or, or storage because you know some vendors already have um, those services running as managed services. Uh, and they're perhaps already deployed in a, in a much more uh, highly distributed or highly available manner. And that makes sense, right? That's, that's definitely one use case that we have to, we have to cover. <clears throat> but you know, for the other users that are perhaps not as advanced, that's looking for um, an all-in-one deployment that comes with all the components that Harbor needs to run, uh, we have built what's called the Harbor cluster operator. And that will basically deploy Harbor with all the dependent services like database, uh, Redis cache, storage, and deploy these in HA mode. So we don't have to deep dive every term, every aspect of this diagram, but uh, the, the key takeaway here is that um, you can see that in this diagram, there's a Harbor, um, Harbor cluster CR at the very top, right? So there's a, there's a Harbor cluster controller that's essentially managing all the services needed for the registry. And the cluster operator custom resource encapsulates the core operator custom resource that I just talked about. Um, as well as the custom resources for all the other individual components. And so the, the Harbor cluster uh, is basically watching over everything and continuously reconciling uh, to make sure that what is running is, is what is actually specified in the CR spec. And so if there are any uh, failures or hiccups, then it can um, automatically redeploy those services. Um, so now for anyone who's wondering about high availability in the sense of uh, multiple harbors, uh, harbor clusters across different data centers, perhaps in different uh, availability zones even, we, we do have a story in the works to address that as well, but that's sort of outside the scope of the harbor cluster operator. Um, I know that there's there, people have been asking about it. So I just want to address it and say, you know, th this is something that uh, we are aware of and it's something that we're working towards. And so for each of these components, you can customize the spec for that CRD essentially, right? You can specify the number of replicas. You can, um, for, for something like cache, or for the Redis cache or for the database, you can choose to use an external um, cache or you can declare in class and run that in HA mode. So uh, we have a really detailed proposal, um, detailed meeting notes on, on the progress for the cluster operator um, <clears throat> under the Go Harbor project. So uh, please feel free to check that out and share your thoughts. You know, we're still wanting more feedback on the design because uh, we will only have released the very first cluster operator version 1.0 um, by the time this recording is shared. So that's everything um, we want to share related to the 2.1 as well as the upcoming 2.2. Uh, just a quick word on collaborating with us and how to get more involved in the community. Please follow our Twitter if you want to be alerted to any of the latest announcements on uh, releases, community events, um, collaborations, or anything Harbor related. Um, we're still holding the, the bi-weekly community meetings, one for US time zone and one for APAC. Uh, this is where 
you know, we have some of the, the feature demos, um, like, like the ones that Daniel just did, and we highlight some of the latest uh, developments in the project, and anyone can come to our Zoom meeting and ask questions or uh, share your experiences around Harbor. Um, you can find the, the detailed uh, meeting notes in, in uh, or the meeting details in, in the README for the Harbor project on GitHub. And then finally, we, we do have a demo deployed that anyone can just go on and, and give it a try, get familiar with the, the UI, um, create a project, add users, push and pull images to and from that project. Um, so demo.goharbor.io. So that's all I have for today. Um, thanks, Daniel, for sharing the demo. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll take any questions for the, for the remaining uh, five to 10 minutes. So thanks, thanks everyone for, for staying with us so far.